With the ID5 mid-sized coupe SUV, Volkswagen offers its most aspirational EV yet. It certainly has a dash more pavement presence than the ID4 SUV it's entirely based upon, and in top GTX hot hatch form, it better showcases the brand's more potent all-wheel drive dual motor powertrain. Volkswagen EV, small boys might want to pin on their bedroom walls. Maybe not quite, but Wolfsburg is getting there. The EV revolution is now in full swing, which means customers want a wider choice and style as well as functionality from their electric vehicles. Volkswagen hopes that they'll want something like this, the ID5, which at launch in 2021 was the third member of the brand's growing family of full battery powered models. We've already seen two other VW Group brands announce coupe versions of their mid-sized EVs. So the Skoda Enyaq iV spawned the Enyaq iV Coupe and the Audi Q4 e-tron sired the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron. In the same way, the ID5 is a Volkswagen ID4 with a more rakish swept back roof and a premium looking price point starting at around £50,000 although partly that's because it's only going to be offered with the larger 77 kilowatt hour battery you can have in the ID4. So an aspirational Volkswagen EV. Interested yet? Well, if so, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. Getting to grips with an ID5 might well be your first experience of EV motoring, and if it is, there's a bit to adapt to. No gear stick, no handbrake, no ignition key, but this is a new era, right? It's supposed to be different. Seatbelt on, having registered that you're sitting quite high, all those battery cells reside beneath the floor. You press the starter button on the steering column, which isn't actually necessary because all you really need to do is twist the gear selector for the single speed automatic transmission. This appendage protrudes from the right hand side of the instrument binnacle and it operates in two directions, forwards to select D for drive or B to auto brake energy regeneration and backwards to select either neutral or reverse. That absent handbrake is replaced by just a button for park, uh, which you'll need to engage at your destination. Set off though, and it releases automatically. The forward thrust away from rest isn't quite as abrupt as it is with some smaller EVs. A lot of that's to do with this car's prodigious two-ton curb weight, a factor which affects most areas of this car's drive demeanor, uh, sometimes helpfully and sometimes not. Uh, that, of course, is a legacy of the substantial battery packs that it has to carry about. Uh, the 77 kilowatt hour battery alone, uh, the only one offered to ID5 customers, weighs a portly 493 kilograms. Despite all that, the performance on offer is reasonably brisk, or at least it is with the 204 PS Pro Performance model we're driving here, which makes 62 in 8.4 seconds. That's two seconds quicker than the 177 PS Pro model, which uh, uh, consequently feels a bit lethargic by EV standards. Uh, whatever your choice, as usual with an EV, the car gradually runs out of puff as you reach a cruise, finally limiting itself to the kind of limited twin digit top speed in this case. 99 miles an hour which puts you in mind of a 70s family model of this kind. Something perhaps like an original Beetle, uh, a model that Volkswagen keeps referencing in its ID5 marketing because this car, like that post-war design, is rear driven, well in its volume versions at least. Uh, there was a good reason why, back in the 40s, uh, Beetle designer Ferdinand Porsche favoured this format and when you drive an ID5 in town you quickly realise the real advantages of placing the powertrain, uh, the electric motor and its associated single speed automatic gearbox on the back axle, uh, thereby freeing up the front wheels for all the steering duties. The turning circle is a London taxi like 10.2 meters. That's better than the brand's tiny up city car. And as a result, this SUV is superbly maneuverable for its size, uh, jinking through traffic holdups and darting into spaces. 
As with other electric vehicles, this one's town travel is characterized by its need to uh, consistently emit a strange E sound, which is intended to warn pedestrians of the ID5's impending approach. Uh, you wonder, though, why it's necessary for this feature to sound so otherworldly. I mean, other brands use film composers to create more pleasant melodies. The rear-driven format also benefits this Volkswagen beyond the city limits, allowing a near 50-50 virtually perfect weight distribution, which, together with the low centre of gravity, uh, which is provided by the central battery pack placement, helps disguise those extra battery kilos. Traction through the turns is excellent, and body roll is checked by firm damping, cleverly engineered for suppleness over poor surfaces, although bigger potholes and speed humps and more extreme cases of broken bitumen will catch it out unless you've stretched all the way to the top of the range and got yourself a model with adaptive damping. All of which ought to provide the recipe for a decently sporting EV. And in some ways it does. Uh, Volkswagen's equipped the ID5 with the Vehicle Dynamics Manager setup that was developed for the current Golf GTI. And that works a bit like the conductor of an orchestra, overseeing and networking all the car's electronic systems, uh, the electric motor, the stability control, the XDS differential lock, and if it's fitted, the DCC adaptive damping, so that the rear wheels find grip in almost every situation. Uh, yes, you do feel that prodigious curb weight with an initial reluctance to turn into tight corners at speed, but persevere and those tractional tools help that bolt to work for you, planting the car reassuringly into the tarmac in a manner that really inspires confidence. It feels good through faster corners as well, helped by the way that Volkswagen's EVs differ from their combustion counterparts in the placement of the steering rack ahead of the front axle. Uh, unfortunately though, feedback through the helm has been clinically anaesthetized, uh, even if you opt for a top model with the progressive steering setup, which uses uh, variable steering rack and pinion gearing to give uh, rather more direct responses to larger steering angles. Either way, although the rack is direct and it wakes up nicely with speed, it seems to have little interest in handling communication, even when you select Sport, which is the most dynamic of the three main drive mode settings that the drivetrain provides. The others are Eco and Comfort, plus there's also an individual menu uh, via which you can select your own parameters. The kind of customer likely to want to do that is a kind of owner being targeted by the ID5 lineup's performance flagship model, the GTX. Uh, here, that 77 kilowatt hour battery is mated to electric motors on both axles, which delivers four wheel drive capability and more potent uh, 299 PS total output. And that's good enough to improve the sprint time uh, to 62 to 6.3 seconds. The top speed in that variant also improves to 112 miles an hour. Uh, there is also an extra drive mode option, traction, which might be helpful in the unlikely event that you want to tow with your ID5. Uh, the brake to trailer limit is 1200 kilos with the GTX. That's up from a ton with the mainstream models. GTX money though would get you a mid-sized EV coupe style crossover with a much ritzier badge than this one and the top variant's extra performance won't be needed by the ID5's primary market which lies amongst those who will prioritize a lowering of the heart rate rather than the raising of it. Uh, these are folk who will appreciate useful standard touches like the eco assistance feature. Uh, now that works with the standard adaptive cruise control system and it uses is navigation data and road sign information which is gained from the car's forward-facing camera to make a series of apparently simple yet actually uh, very complex calculations. Now these prompt you to lift off the accelerator as you approach a bend or a town boundary while at the same time uh, the car's drive system performs optimum energy recuperation to maximize battery range. Uh, yes, battery range. Well, you want to know about that. Uh, Volkswagen claims between 296 and 300 miles for the dual motor GTX and between 311 and 316 miles from mainstream models like this one, although we've never seen anything like that showing on the range readout uh, throughout this test, even when you're starting off apparently fully charged. At least the displayed figure does appear real-world accurate, uh, which wasn't always the case with EVs. 
though to achieve that you'll need to spend quite a lot of time with the eco drive mode engaged uh, that restricts throttle response and with the gear selector rotated forwards to engage the B or battery mode uh, which summons the car's regenerative braking function although it is a fairly mild one actually there's no option to increase this to create the kind of one pedal feature that some EV rivals offer which causes the car to automatically slow so much off throttle that there's hardly ever any actual need to use the brake uh, still at least the mix of regenerative and friction braking is well judged despite the fact that curiously for such a futuristic car uh, the rear wheels have old-fashioned brake drums rather than discs at higher speeds when you'll dispense with the regenerative harvesting you'll notice wind and tire noise but that's only because there's no engine note to mask them you might, like us, rather regret the way that uh, technology has dispensed with the need for that, but it's uh, really hard not to be impressed by the sophisticated drive systems which marching progress has brought with it. Uh, this Volkswagen's travel assist setup, for example, which uh, unfortunately this test car's entry trim level uh, does without. Uh, this is a camera and radar sensor controlled assistance system which will autonomously accelerate, brake and steer your ID five while maintaining a safe distance to the vehicles ahead. Uh, we are also impressed by the Park Assist Plus package, that's another thing which is missing from this base spec car here. Uh, that can remember complex parking manoeuvres of up to 50 metres. With that, you'd be able to park your ID5 on the road outside your house, then press a button and marvel as it threads itself between neighbours' cars, around the flower beds, up your driveway and into its designated spot or garage berth. Lovely. I mean, if this sort of thing suggests the beginning of the end of driving as we know it, then cars like this Volkswagen are ready and waiting to ease us into this brave new world with a note of reassurance that maybe it'll be better, cleaner, safer and perhaps even more satisfying than we might think. Exterior design is obviously important to you if you're after an ID5, otherwise you'd have paid less for an ID4 instead. And the SUV coupe silhouette that we first saw on the brand's ID Cross concept car certainly delivers more pavement presence than you'll get with this car's showroom stablemate. Uh, it's embellished by roof rails and big wheels. Now, whether you think it's as powerful, confident and elegant as Volkswagen thinks it is will be a subjective call. What's certainly true is that the swept back shape helps with the aerodynamics improved here to a slippery 0.26 CD thanks to the way that across the 4.6 metre length the greenhouse drops gently to the back and it becomes increasingly narrow towards the rear where the contrast coloured roof line rises into these extended D pillars. Uh, the right back A pillars uh, and these flush door handles play their part too as does the design of the large wheels which vary between 19 and 21 inches in size uh, we have the 20 inch Dramon rims here. Even across the underbody, small spoilers and trim panels optimally guide the flow of air. The rear wheels are rather curiously equipped with old fashioned drum brakes. Apparently, thanks to the EV setup's regenerative braking element, uh, there's less need for the actual brakes to do the stopping, so rear drums are all that's actually needed. Uh, anyway, they impose less drag on the braking surfaces than discs do. All the key drive stuff sits over the rear axle, principally the single speed gearbox and the permanent magnet synchronous electric motor, which has been mated to it. Uh, they're both very efficiently packaged. Volkswagen says that uh, both those elements, together with the associated uh, control electronics, collectively weigh just 90 kilos and they could fit into a typical gym bag. All of this is powered by a high voltage battery, which has been very efficiently arranged in the underbody to save space. Which leaves nothing to sit here at the front end, but a few auxiliary units like the air conditioning compressor and of course the steering rack. Uh, there is full width lighting here too. A strip of light uh, connects the headlamps to the Volkswagen badge, which is front and center. 
These headlamps are of the LED Matrix ID light variety, with each module styled to be reminiscent of human eyes and made up of 18 LED units. The electric radiator roller blind uh, behind this lower intake doesn't open until the power pack needs cooled air. Also directly influenced by airflow are the spoiler, uh, the lifted diffuser insert, and the sculpted shape of the LED tail lamp clusters. Uh, they're linked by a full width lighting strip to emphasize the 1.8 meter width. Uh, they look good too. The brake lights create an X shape while the dynamic turn signal uh, sweeps from inside out. Animated lighting patterns run through these tail lights to say hello or goodbye to the driver as you unlock or leave the car uh, with different animations selectable from the central screen. Under all of this sits the car's sophisticated MEB platform, uh, development of which took the lion's share of the £54 billion that the Volkswagen Group has spent developing its new era EV technology. Uh, this chassis is, of course, shared with all other VW Group brands. It already features in close group rivals like the Skoda Enyaq IV Coupe and the Audi's Q4 Sportback e-tron. Enough of the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. Now, a bit disappointingly, these flush fitting door handles are fixed so they don't spring out as you approach. Uh, each exterior mirror incorporates a small projection light which casts a honeycomb pattern of light onto the ground uh, when the doors open. That's a typical ID series styling theme. There's no need for a key or a fob. <laughs> And inside, there's no need for a gear lever, an ignition slot, or a handbrake either. Although unlike Tesla, Volkswagen does still think you'll need a start-stop button, curiously emblazoned with the word engine. Uh, rather predictably, everything's exactly as in an ID4, which means it's all been designed around what Volkswagen calls an open space concept. As you enter a wide, narrow light strip below the windscreen, the ID light will indicate the car's readiness to drive. It's difficult to see in daylight, but it'll be a real talking point at night because it colourfully indicates key driving functions. You sit quite high on top of all those batteries, and as usual with the brand's ID models, a minimalist open plan but rather clinical feel persists, which Volkswagen has tried unsuccessfully to lift by imprinting play and pause symbols on the two footwell pedals. Screens will be the other talking point. The little and large approach, a big central screen and a small instrument monitor, works quite well on the Dinky ID3, but feels much less suited to a bigger crossover at this more exalted price point. Rivals deliver instrument screens twice the size of the little 5.3 inch monitor provided here. At least what you view through the three spoke wheel is neatly designed. The little display is able to show navigational instructions, but primarily it prioritizes a central digital speedo with speed sign recognition above and gear selection and battery charge info below. To the left is a driver assistance graphic, which can be either minimalized or maximized with a right hand swipe on the steering wheel view button. A gear selector is housed in a right hand protrusion from the uh, instrument binnacle there. And there's additional novelty in the way that the whole binnacle moves up and down as you adjust the wheel. This wheel is embellished with fiddly touch sensitive buttons, which everyone seems to hate. It takes time to realize that you have to swipe them rather than press them, which isn't a natural action to do when you're driving. And the left one inaccurately advertises drive mode functionality, uh, but delivers instead cruise control and a speed limiter. That's the first irritation you come across. And the second lies with these slider controls beneath the central screen for temperature and volume. Uh, those are invented in times where we weren't all slavering our hands in sanitizer and incomprehensibly uh, not illuminated at night. So you'll be waiting for street lamps to better illuminate their use. Um, fortunately, you don't have to use them because the central screen has a supposedly advanced voice control system, which uh, Volkswagen assures us has a recognition rate of 95% based on anything you say to it, prefaced by the command Hello ID. Despite that, as in the Golf and the ID4, we found this voice system is a bit hit and miss, particularly with noisy kids in the car. It struggles with postcodes. It occasionally gives you navigation destinations rather than the radio station you requested. 
And there are plenty of things that for the time being, until Volkswagen gets around to a software update, it simply can't do, adjusting drive modes, for example. And once you master the ID parlance, though, talking to your ID5 does almost become second nature. It allows you to do things like adjust the temperature, uh, play your favorite song, uh, make or receive a call, or give directions. Those last two functions are assisted too by color coordinated flashes from the ID light strip, which also displays in green when the car is charging and flashes red if the front assist sensors indicate a need for you to brake suddenly. We should tell you a bit more about this central screen. It's standardized in its largest 12 inch Discover Max form for ID5s. As is the norm these days, this display has inhaled most of the secondary controls, too many of them actually. Like most reviewers, for safety's sake, we think that ventilation switchgear needs to be separated out into proper bespoke buttons. Uh, this monitor's software setup provided plenty of headaches in development, uh, but the system's capacity for over-the-air updates has allowed the brand to continually improve on it, and in this enhanced Generation 3.1 form, its menu structure is certainly an improvement over what was offered in earlier ID models. Uh, there are, of course, all the usual navigation, DAB plus radio and Bluetooth features uh, displayed with super sharp graphics, plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, and that's accessible uh, through Volkswagen App Connect. Uh, to access whatever you need, you choose either a home menu with virtual buttons, or you press the right-hand square screen button to access instead a customizable split screen, which typically will show things like media, phone and charging settings alongside a navigational map. Uh, the vehicle section is particularly useful with car status info and the data section offering selectable since start, long term and since charge options. We referenced the airy open space interior vibe earlier. This is helped by the absence of a transmission tunnel which makes the footwells bigger and would have allowed for a walk across front cabin had not the designers decided to fill the centre space with this rather ugly uh, centre console dominated by over prominent cup holders which ought to be smartly compartmentalised away with a lid at this price point, uh, but they aren't. Build quality from the uh, Zwickau factory in Saxony is up to the high standard we expect from Volkswagen. Uh, unfortunately though, some of the materials used are not. Yes, it all feels a bit nicer than in an ID3, and the brand has tried unsuccessfully to distract attention from trim quality with this slush molded dash top panel and a variety of upholstery and trimming colors. But it's difficult to avoid noticing some of the hard and rather cheap plastics that feature elsewhere around the lift out central cup holder we just mentioned, for example. It's the sort of thing that would be just about acceptable on a base ID4, but which feels rather hard to accept at the premium prices the brand wants to charge for this, that model's supposedly more sophisticated showroom stablemate. Uh, we get that EV technology is expensive and that sacrifices inevitably have to be made to keep asking prices affordable, but you wonder whether this penny pinching needs to be quite so obvious. I mean, in some ways, a Golf costing half as much has far more of a premium feel. Some of the other cabin issues smack a little of cost cutting too. Was it really necessary to do without individual driver's door switches for the rear windows? Uh, presumably, uh, this touch panel by your right knees cheaper to make than one with individual buttons too. Uh, these ones don't tend to respond with very much conviction, which means that you uh, sometimes find yourself turning things back off again because uh, you've pressed the button twice thinking that it hadn't registered the first time around. On top of that, uh, some of the central screen functions lag and you can only use half of the interior of the glove box. But there's plenty we really like too. The ID light strip feature we mentioned earlier on works really well. Uh, also designating navigational directions and in green, battery charging. Plus it can warn you right in your sight line in potentially dangerous situations like when traffic ahead is rapidly decelerating. In addition, there are lovely touches like dimmable overhead lights and a standard multicolor ambient lighting system which bathes the cabin in your choice of 30 soothing shades after dark. 
Plus there's standard heat for the steering wheel and the front seats. Uh, these chairs offer reasonable comfort and they include an adjustable armrest, although it's a bit disappointing that they do without lumbar support with the entry-level style variant like this one. Uh, still, they come nicely trimmed in this eco-conscious Alcantara-like Art Velour Micro Fleece, which is partly made from recycled plastic bottles and is free from animal materials. Uh, plus, Volkswagen throws in plenty of standard equipment, an auto-dimming rear view mirror, a wireless smartphone charger, and most notably a clever augmented reality head-up display which projects a three-dimensional staggered image at an apparent distance of around three to ten meters in front of the vehicle. Thick pillars both front and rear can sometimes make this Volkswagen a bit difficult to see out of in tight parking situations so you'll need the standard all-round sensors and the rear-view camera. It's better though than a Ford Mustang Mach-E in this regard. It's aided by a relatively glassy cabin for something professing to be a coupe SUV. Uh, there is plenty of storage capacity too. Much of that is in this lower centre console which has a roller blind top that slides back to reveal silver tipped adjustable dividers, twin USB-C ports and a wireless charging mat. Uh, there's no overhead sunglasses compartment though. You do get a ticket clip in the driver's sun visor and there are big flock lined door bins. Right, time to take a look out back. Uh, rear cabin space, one of the things we really liked about the ID4, but with 25 millimeters less roof height, will that be compromised here? To some extent, yes, headroom is compromised not only by that more swept back silhouette, but also by the fact that Volkswagen has standardized this vast panoramic glass roof for ID5 customers. And the result is that anyone traveling here that's over six feet tall will find their hair brushing the ceiling. Still, you'd expect to have to make a slight compromise in that regard to get this more stylish body shape. And this huge glass top is well worth having. It airily lifts what would otherwise be quite a dark and dour interior, despite these rear quarter lights. In terms of space for your knees and legs, as in the ID4, it's all very impressive, as so often these days in a mid-sized EV, uncompromised by the packaging needs of a combustion powertrain. In some ways, this is surprising because this car's wheelbase is the same uh, as that of the dinky little ID3, same length, but the designers have really maximized what's possible within those confines. Uh, despite having the driveway footprint of a Volkswagen Tiguan, the brand claims interior space more akin to the larger Tiguan Allspace, and that's pretty much how it feels. It's also a wider cabin than you'd expect a car of this size to be able to provide. And with no central transmission tunnel to obstruct things, three adults could actually fit reasonably easily into the back of this car. This bench doesn't either slide or recline as it would do in a Tiguan or in the rival BMW iX3, but there is a reasonable amount of storage provision, including compact door bins, along with mat pockets and little upper pouches for mobile phones, both stitched into the back of the front seats. Uh, there are twin USB-C ports too, and coat hooks which feature on the B pillars and the grab handles. Plus, you get individual touch-sensitive overhead lights, separate climate controls with central vents and cup holders in the central armrest. Let's finish with a look in the boot. Uh, you are, by the way, going to have to use this boot for cargo storage. Unlike some other EVs, there's no extra luggage room in the nose of the car, uh, which, as we said earlier on, is taken up by the power electrics for the driveline. Uh, annoyingly, given the spend that's required for this car, uh, if you've chosen a base trimmed ID5, like the one we have here, you'll have to lift this rather heavy tailgate yourself. And disappointingly, the catch isn't neatly incorporated into the Volkswagen badge as it is on a Golf. Uh, where a power tailgate is fitted, it'll be one of those that can also be opened with a swipe of your foot below the bumper. Once the wide hatch rises, the space provided at 549 litres is surprisingly six litres larger than that of the ID4, as well as being 14 litres more spacious than the rival Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron and 147 litres more spacious than the rival Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's also 29 litres bigger than the maximum trunk capacity of a Tiguan, despite the presence of an electric motor down under the floor here, which eliminates the possibility of having the usual under 
the floor central storage area. You do though get a deep shallow well beneath the cargo base's leading edge under which the tyre repair kit and the charging leads can be stored. Only one of these, by the way, are the one for your wall box and for public charging is supplied as standard. Appallingly, on an EV of this price, you'll have to pay extra for one that you'll occasionally need with a three pin plug. There's quite a high lip to lump your stuff over, but a tie down net's provided to compensate for the fact that the recycled load area cover feels quite cheap and the boot carpet feels cheap and abrasive. Uh, still, once you get your items in, the space provided is square and very usable with wide recesses at either side so that things like golf club bags will more easily fit in. Up to nine carry-on suitcases could be accommodated here and that's two more than you get in a rival Ford Mustang Mach-E. Uh, there are a wide variety of body-coloured tie-down points uh, with a bag, hook and a light on each side too, plus an elastic edge strap on the left and a warning triangle neatly incorporated into the inner part of the tailgate. The rear bench doesn't split flexibly 40-20-40 like it does in, say, the BMW iX3 we mentioned earlier, but Volkswagen does at least provide a ski hatch so longer items can be poked through into the cabin. Uh, flattening the 60-40 split rear bench frees up 1,561 litres of capacity loaded to roof height. There's no fold flat front passenger seat option which would enable you to carry longer items like surfboards so those will have to go on the roof uh, which equipped with the appropriate cross rails can take up to 75 kilos of load. This is the Volkswagen ID range flagship and it's priced to reflect that in the 50 to 56,000 pound bracket at the time of launch and the time of this test in autumn 2022. Uh, that represents a premium of over 6,100 pounds over equivalent versions of the ID4, which to us seems quite ambitious. Well, that's one word we could use. Partner brand Audi, who are not usually known for pricing reticence, only charges around £1,500 more to choose a Q4 Sportback e-tron over a normal Q4 e-tron, which essentially is the same as going from an ID4 to an ID5. Hmm. We'll come back to competitor value comparisons after we've briefed you on the ID5 model lineup. Now, all variants have the same 77 kilowatt hour battery, unlike the ID4, which has an entry level 52 kilowatt hour option too. But there are three options regarding the power output of the electric motor powered by it. The range starts with variants powered by the 174 PS Pro motor, which around half of ID5 customers are expected to want. But you'll probably want to find the extra fee of just under 50. £1,500 for the uprated 204 PS Pro performance motor that we're trying here. Uh, that's expected to account for around 35% of sales. With either a Pro or a Pro Performance ID5, which can only be rear driven, there are three trim level options base style, which is what we have here, and then mid-range tech and top spec max. Think in terms of needing a premium of around £3,500 to progress from one spec option to another. The standalone GTX model at the very top of the ID5 lineup is the only dual motor all-wheel drive variant with a motor output of 299 PS. With an ID5 GTX, you have a single style spec model available. Got all that? Good. Right, back to those competitor comparisons. Uh, you can see Volkswagen's reasoning here in starting prices from around £50,000. Uh, that's the cost of an entry-level 70 kilowatt hour Ford Mustang Mach-E or an Audi Q4 Sportback 40 e-tron. And it's the sort of money you'd pay for a reasonably equipped Volvo C40 recharge or a Genesis GV60. Uh, the other VW Group mid-sized EV crossover coupe in this segment is a Skoda Enyaq Coupe IV. But at the time of this test, that wasn't being offered here in comparable rear-driven form. Uh, the other VW Group EV brand nameplate is Cupra, whose born model might also interest an ID5 buyer. Yes, it is a slightly smaller car, but with the Bourne, there's a compensation of a much lower price, think 40 to 42,000 pounds, and the fact that the 77 kilowatt hour battery gets mated to a faster 230 PS e-boost motor. 
Obviously, there are lots of alternative mid-sized full electric SUV options you could consider from brands outside the VW group, notably cars like the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Mercedes EQA, which start in comparable forms in the 45 to 47,000 pound bracket. But Volkswagen will point out rightly that those boxier models aren't really SUV coupes and that therefore they're targeted more directly by the more conventional ID4 model we mentioned earlier, which does sell in the 40 to 50,000 pound bracket. If you're not really hung up on having an SUV coupe, we'd also point you towards a couple of similarly sized BMW EV models, the i4, which is a saloon, and at the time of this test, sold in comparable eDrive 40 form from around 54,000 pounds, and the iX3, which is a conventional SUV, and at the time of this test, sold from around 61,000. The all-wheel drive dual motor ID5 GTX at the top of the range, priced from just over 55,000 pounds, has its own unique rivals, uh, the closest of which is a mechanically identical Skoda Enyaq Coupe IV VRS, uh, priced from around 53,000 pounds at the time of filming. The other VW Group model of the same ilk is the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron in 50 quattro form, which costs from around 56,000 pounds, but which you'd need in 58,000 pound S line trim to get something comparable to an ID5 GTX or an Enyaq VRS. The other possible segment choice is the dual motor version of the Volvo C40, which costs from around £58,000 but gives you a lot more power, over 400 PS. An ID5 GTX customer might also be considering a Polestar 2 long range dual motor around £50,000 or a Mercedes EQA 354 Matic that's around £53,000. Enough with alternatives. Let's say you've looked at them and you've decided that there's nothing quite like an ID5. In that case, you'll want to know just how generous Volkswagen's been with ID5 specification. Time to have a look at that now. Uh, let's start with features that all ID5 models share, including those with this uh, base style trim level for each of the two available mainstream motors. As mentioned earlier, the 177 PS Pro and the 204 PS Pro Performance motors. You get a charging cable, obviously, six meters in length and of the usual Mode 3 Type 2 32 amp variety. And to meet EU laws, this car has an exterior e-sound feature which emits a futuristic noise at under 12 miles an hour to warn pedestrians of this Volkswagen's impending arrival. All ID5s also come with full LED matrix headlamps and a huge panoramic glass roof, plus LED tail lights, auto headlamps and wipers, all round parking sensors, keyless entry, uh, power folding mirrors, a climate heated windscreen, heated washer jets and an alarm. Inside, all ID5s feature the ID light, a wide, narrow light strip under the windscreen, which assists the driver by flashing or moving in different colors to draw attention to different functions. Uh, there's an augmented reality head-up display, a driving profile, driving mode setup, and a rear view camera too. Uh, also included is an air care climatronic three zone air conditioning system with rear controls, a leather trimmed and heated multifunction steering wheel, and comfort front seats with armrests. The upholstery is a smart Alcantara-like Art Velour micro fleece, and those front seats are heated. Plus there's an auto dimming rear view mirror, an electric auxiliary air heater, a wireless smartphone charger, and an ambient lighting setup with up to 30 color options. For the boot, there's a ski hatch and a partitioning net. Also standard across the range is the Discover Max touchscreen navigation infotainment system. Uh, this gives you a whole range of media features uh, provided courtesy of a 12 inch central screen which replicates some of its functions on the 5.3 inch monitor behind the steering wheel. Uh, the main screen can be accessed uh, either by touch or via Hello ID natural voice control and it features a DAB plus tuner, Bluetooth and Volkswagen's wireless app connect setup which gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. There's a lot of standard driving tech too, principally the ACC adaptive cruise control system which incorporates predictive cruise control and which uses images from a widescreen camera along with navigation data to adjust the car's speed ahead of bends and speed restrictions. 
Uh, plus, of course, ACC can do all the usual things too. It adapts your ID5 speed to the vehicles ahead, and in the event of a tailback, it can bring the car to a controlled stop and then start it off again without any driver input. Uh, there's also a drive mode system with eco, comfort, sport, and individual settings. Another clever standard integrated feature is Car2X, a system which communicates wirelessly with other Car2X enabled vehicles using Wi-Fi technology so as to share information and uh, brief your ID5's electronic systems automatically on traffic updates. So for example, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, uh, the system will know before you do when the end of the jam is coming up and it'll get the adaptive cruise control system ready to resume cruising speeds. And Car2X also incorporates a hazard warning system uh, and that advises you of impending roadworks, uh, accidents and emergency vehicles. It can even detect when other cars with the system are performing panic braking in front of you. And in an emergency like that, it'll turn on your own brake lights even before you've reacted. And that helps to avoid you being rear-ended. Plus, of course, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? Uh, this one is called the WeConnect ID app. And as usual with an EV, it's the sort of thing that can preheat or cool the car and set charging times. Plus, the app helps you find and use over 150,000 public charge points. And it works with a single charging card that you can use right across Europe, which includes access to Ionity's high-speed charging stations along major highways. Uh, also included are online traffic information services and using the app you can do things like remotely lock or unlock the car, uh, flash the lights to help you find it in a car park, uh, browse your ID5 service history and check whether the charging cable is connected. Uh, if it is, you can start or stop charging sessions from your sofa. Uh, to get you going with all this, you simply download the free application, uh, set up a user account, add your Volkswagen, and then activate a WeConnect start contract, at which point the uh, functions all become available for three years. What about the trim differences between the three mainstream trim levels? Well, at first glance, not too much separates this style spec from the mid-range tech trim level. Uh, both get the same 19-inch Hamar alloy wheels, but look a bit closer because the tech models build on the kit tally with a few desirable extra touches. Things like power adjustable front seats, which include a massage function. Uh, there's platinum gray interior style plus cabin finishing, an area view camera setup, a Dyn Audio stereo system upgrade, and a powered tailgate, which you can operate with a swipe of your foot. Uh, tech trim also gets you a park assist plus setup, which steers you into spaces, and which has a clever memory feature, which remembers your frequently accessed spaces and automatically steers you into them. Plus, at this level, you get Volkswagen's Assistance Pack Plus, which gives you four important extra camera features, traffic jam assist, lane change assist, and emergency assist, all of which we'll explain in a few moments' time when we get on to safety. Uh, Volkswagen's clever travel assist system also comes included from Tech Trim upwards, uh, which in concert with the ACC cruise control setup can take care of a lot of the driving duties for you at highway speeds. It enables assisted steering, braking and acceleration at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. Uh, by integrating the signals from the front camera as well as GPS and map data, the system can incorporate into its assistance input local speed limit information, uh, town boundary signs, junctions and roundabouts too. If you can stretch to top max trim, Volkswagen will further add some useful driving features, uh, DCC adaptive chassis control, a heat pump to preserve battery range in colder weather, and more direct progressive steering, which sharpens response as you turn at speed and makes parking maneuvering easier. An ID5 Max will also give you larger Dramon black diamond turned 20 inch alloy wheels and an interior Top Sport Plus cabin trimming package giving you front seats with integrated head restraints along with 14 way powered adjustment. 
For completion in our perusal of standard ID5 spec across the range, uh, let's also tell you that the top GTX performance model replicates most of the elements of Max spec, but has a look set apart by unique Estad 20 inch alloy wheels, sport suspension with a 15 millimeter lower body height, an anthracite colored roof frame bar, uh, bespoke outer front air intake grills, and a sportier rear bumper. There aren't many options you can have, and there would be even fewer if, as it should have done, the brand had included the Mode 2 Type 2 230 volt one phase AC cable you'll need to attach this car to a domestic three pin socket, which of course you'll need for times when you have no access to a wall box or a public charger. And on that subject, if you haven't owned an EV before, uh, do remember to leave some budget aside for a garage wall box, either the base pod point one or the fancier Volkswagen ID Charge Pro box. Uh, we'll brief you on those in our cost section. On style and max models, you can also specify the energy efficient heat pump we just mentioned. Uh, that, as we said, should add a few miles to your driving range in the winter months. If you don't want your ID5 in solid moonstone grey, the rather drab single standard colour, you'll need to be paying your dealer more for one of the four other metallic shades, like the King's Red Premium Metallic that we have here. Uh, whatever the shade chosen, you do get a standard contrast coloured black roof, unless you opt for Grenadilla Black Metallic, which is all black anyway. Uh, you can upgrade your wheels too. On this style variant we have here, the wheels have been upgraded to 20 inch Dramon rims and even larger 21 inch Narvik alloys are available too. Otherwise, the options on offer are purely practical ones. You can specify a tow bar, not always possible on an EV. And if you do, that will allow you to specify bicycle carriers for two or three bikes. With the optional roof crossbars, you can also put bikes on the roof or roof box. You can pay extra for luxury textile floor mats or rubber ones. For the boot, there's an optional boot tray and a reversible mat or a liner available in either flexible or semi-rigid form. You can also get mud flaps, a protective strip for the tailgate, a 19-inch spare wheel kit and a sunbind set for the rear side windows. Let's finish as we always do with a look at safety. You'd expect some sort of forward collision warning autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days. Uh, Volkswagen's is called Front Assist and as usual with these sorts of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard is detected, uh, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, uh, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, as with the current Golf model, this setup's city emergency braking system has been enhanced now with what Volkswagen calls extended and proactive pedestrian protection. Now this is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be just about to inadvertently step into your path. Every ID5 also gets a lane assist lane keeping system which warns you when you stray out of your lane and applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. In addition, there's high beam assist and a driver alert feature which monitors your reactions for drowsiness and will, if necessary, prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. And you get swerve support to help with high speed avoidance maneuvers. Uh, plus there's also a speed limiter, a radar sensor controlled distance warning, and that stops you from getting too close to the car in front and an oncoming vehicle braking when turning feature. Now that will stop you from turning into a junction into the path of another car. Plus there's also dynamic road sign display which pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them on the dash. All of this is in addition to all the more usual features that come fitted on every Volkswagen family model, which have together helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. Uh, there are twin front side and curtain airbags, although disappointingly, you don't also get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. Uh, you do though get a clever center airbag, and this is a feature that was first introduced with the ID3. In the event of a side impact or a rollover, this airbag can prevent the driver and front passenger from colliding with each other. 
There are, of course, Isofix child seat fastenings on the rear bench. It's also worth mentioning that one of the features of the WeConnect ID app that we mentioned earlier on is the emergency call e-call SOS system, which in the event of an accident where the airbags are triggered will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus an ABS braking system further assisted by CVC cornering brake control through the bends, plus an HBA hydraulic braking assistant, which helps to reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency. Plus, all ID5s get a hill hold function, which stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Uh, there's also tire pressure monitoring. That's the extent of the safety kit you get on the style variants, but as I mentioned earlier, further up the range, more camera safety items feature. Uh, avoid that base trim level and your ID5 will come with three extra camera safety features that we touched on earlier on. Traffic jam assist, which can take over steering, braking and throttle duties uh, in stop start queues. Lane change assist, uh, that will allow the car to change lanes with a flick of the indicator stalk. And also emergency assist, which will take over control of the car if you get taken ill of the wheel and bring it to a smooth, controlled stop. You might hope that the ID5's sleeker shape would give you a bit of extra driving range compared to the boxier ID4 SUV showroom stablemate. Uh, actually, it's a fraction less, 327 miles for the Pro and Pro Performance ID5 variants compared to 328 miles for the 77 kilowatt hour uh, ID4 model equivalents. But this needn't matter much if that figure's class competitive. Well, it depends on the benchmark you have in mind. Uh, we've crunched the numbers here so you don't have to. That range reading is about 60 miles better than you get in equivalent rear-driven similar capacity versions of the Mercedes EQA, the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Volvo C40 which is a good start. It's about 40 miles better than you get in a BMW iX3 2. In a mainstream ID5 you're looking at a similar level of driving range uh, as you get in Audi's mechanically identical Q4 Sportback 40 e-tron and in a rear-driven version of the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Genesis GV60. Volkswagen does have some way to go though before it can claim class leadership in this regard. A Polestar 2 long range single motor would take you up to 336 miles and BMW's i4 eDrive 40 manages 367 from a single charge. Of course, if you're merely going to be using this ID5 as a second car for mainly suburban duties, the total range figure it ultimately delivers might not hugely matter. After all, the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders tells us that 94% of UK journeys are of less than 24 miles, although you'll need to bear in mind that, as with all EVs, the quoted range figure could drop significantly over long motorway journeys. It'll also drop considerably in cold weather, unless you've paid Volkswagen the considerable extra amount that it wants to supply the car with a heat pump or paid extra for the Max and GTX trim levels, which have that feature fitted as standard. Other class rivals are the Mercedes EQA, for example, uh, rightly see a heat pump as something that ought to be standard on an EV of this price. As we keep saying while testing EVs, range readings aren't the be-all and end-all, or at least they won't be if the car in question can offer quick charging times. Uh, with the introduction of the ID5, Volkswagen took the opportunity to introduce an upgrade in battery technology. Uh, now that saw maximum DC charging capacity rise from 125 kilowatts, which is where it was when the ID4 was launched, up to 135 kilowatts. The brand's been quite uh, self-congratulatory about that, rolling this improvement out to all its ID models and trumpeting the fact that that enhancement has cut nine minutes from the 77 kilowatt hour battery charging time at a public DC rapid charger. And that means that a mainstream ID5 can be replenished from five to 80% in 29 minutes. The weightier dual motor ID5 GTX, by the way, which offers 314 miles, uh, needs 36 minutes to 
do replenish itself under the same circumstances. Either way, that time span would probably give you 230 to 250 miles of real world driving. That's all well and good, but we point out that a 135 kilowatt maximum charging capacity is starting to look rather lethargic when 800 volt rivals like the Kia EV6, uh, Hyundai's Ionic 5 and the Genesis GV60 that we mentioned earlier on can charge it up to 350 kilowatts from the new generation of ultra fast public chargers. Uh, chargers that at present no Volkswagen EV can access because the brand still uses an older 400 volt electrical platform. Still, the Wolfsburg brand has done its best to help ID5 owners make the most of what they have. Uh, thanks to a software update, the central screen's charging menu is here more informative and it's better structured than it was with the uh, ID4 when we first tested that. As a result, the route calculation function in the navigation system is better able to perform intelligent multi-stop route planning for long journeys so that the destination is reached as quickly as possible. Any charging stops are calculated on the capacity of the charging stations. As a result of this, the program may suggest two short charging visits with high power instead of one long charging stop with low power. All this stuff's vital if you'll be using your ID5 for more than mere commuting duties. As before, Volkswagen provides its EV owners with the electrical infrastructure that supports both AC and DC charging, and there's usual available phone app, uh, WeConnect ID app, which helps you find and use over 150,000 public charge points. Now, hopefully, when you visit one of those, uh, you'll be able to hook up to a rapid DC charger. Uh, we've already given you the half hour battery charge replenishment time for one of those. If you find yourself stuck, though, with the feebler 50 kilowatt DC public charger, it'll take about an hour and a half to get an 80% fill. Back at home, an AC one phase 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box would replenish the 77 kilowatt hour battery from zero to 100% in 12 and a quarter hours, although you could almost halve that time if your property or business can support a gutsier uh, AC three 11 kilowatt charger. At the other extreme, uh, think in terms of needing to double the 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box charging times that we just quoted if you merely connect up a conventional three pin domestic plug. The charging plug is located on the driver's side rear wing and a charging screen is accessed on the center dash Discover Max display. Uh, there a locations tab points you to the nearest charging station and a current settings section shows range and battery percentage. Or you can set the charging timer using uh, the screen or that WeConnect app that we just mentioned. Now using this, uh, you can charge at public points across Europe with just one charging card based on a WeCharge plan that is tailored to suit you. Plus you'll get exclusive prices for using the Ionity high speed charging network. Although uh, most of the rapid charges for that are on the continent. As to the home charging regime we've just been talking about, uh, which of course is what you'll be engaging in for over 80% of the time, well if you're new to the whole EV thing uh, then you'll obviously have to invest in a garage wall box. Uh, Volkswagen has teamed up with Podpoint uh, who offer their solar home charger and that'll get you off and running. This can charge up to 10 times faster than a domestic three pin plug. Uh, it benefits from over the air software Wi-Fi updates to unlock new features and it incorporates auto power balancing which lets the car charge in harmony with your home. Plus it can be paired with the Podpoint app to track charging costs and energy usage and a three year on site warranty is included. If you want a more sophisticated home charger, then Volkswagen will sell you its own ID Charger Pro unit, which can work with either single or three phase power supplies. It's available with 4.5 or 7.5 meters of cable, and it has a billing grade meter, plus extra features like dynamic load management, uh, energy management, a DC fault current sensor, uh, remote access via the Volkswagen WeConnect ID app, and Wi-Fi ethernet communication, via LTE stroke 4G connectivity, which isn't dependent on your home network. You will obviously want to minimize the necessity for over-frequent charging by maximizing battery range wherever possible. 
whatever the range figure of the ID5 model you select, it will, as ever on an EV, be heavily influenced not only by extreme temperatures and by highway use, as we already mentioned, but also by gradients and the amount of weight being carried. Of course, the major contributory factor will be driving style. Uh, you'll need to select the car's most frugal eco drive mode to get anywhere near the quoted range figures, of course. Uh, that restricts throttle travel and air conditioner output. Uh, you will also need to be frequently selecting the B regenerative braking setting provided by the gear selector. Now with that engaged, uh, the electric motor functions as a generator and it feeds power back into the battery and you will experience a quite abrupt off-throttle retardation up to 0.25 G uh, claims Volkswagen. If you don't use the Eco and B settings regularly, the range figure drops quite a bit, uh, but that's true of all EVs. We've been averaging just over 250 miles of range from the 77 kilowatt hour battery throughout this test, which we'd suggest would be probably pretty typical. Although in one instance with brisk driving and with the heater going, uh, that dropped down to not much more than 200 miles. In all circumstances, this car does at least do its best to help you out a bit. Uh, we did reference the reasonably slip drag coefficient figure earlier on 0.26 CD compared with 0.28 CD for the ID4 and that obviously helps and more proactively a standard eco assistance feature which draws on navigation data and road signs detected by the car's forward-facing camera so that if your ID5 is approaching a bend or a town boundary the system can visually indicate that you should lift off the accelerator uh, this apparently simple yet complex calculation allows the car's drive system to perform optimum energy recuperation uh, thereby supporting optimum range performance what else? Uh, well, hopefully you'll be saving a substantial amount of money over what you'd previously had to shell out in fuel, although spiralling electricity costs have eaten into that, of course, recently. Uh, fortunately, the uh, cost-saving benefits of running an EV go a bit further than that. Uh, driving into congestion charge zones will be free, until 2025 anyway, and you should also make savings in road tax, and big savings in benefiting kind tax, uh, like its EV competitors. The ID5 has a BIK rating of 2% across the range. Compare that to 37% for a comparably sized and powered petrol or diesel Volkswagen Tiguan. Even a plug-in Tiguan e-hybrid is rated at 11%. The 2% BIK rating is down of course to the fact that like any EV this one has a zero emissions CO2 figure. Although of course the energy to drive this car has to cause pollution somewhere. Uh, this Volkswagen has a well to wheels carbon contribution of 35.9 grams per kilometer compared to 31.7 grams per kilometer for the ID3 and the ID5 has an efficiency rating of 3.45 miles per kilowatt which is about average for this type of SUV but some way down on the 4.57 miles per kilowatt figure of the ID3 either way this Volkswagen is some way from being completely green Residual values look promising. Uh, independent experts CAP reckon that after three years and 30,000 miles, a style spec Pro Performance ID5 like this one would still be worth £30,225. That's 59% of its original asking price, which is pretty class competitive and probably slightly better than you get from a comparable Ford Mustang Mach-E. Uh, insurance for the ID5 is also very comparable to the ID4 Stablemate. It starts at Group 30. P for the 177 PS Pro models, uh, Group 33 P for the 204 PS Pro performance variants like the one we're driving here, and Group 41 P for the top dual motor GTX variant. An ID5 driver will enjoy lower maintenance costs than would be needed for a combustion model. Obviously no oil changes are required and regenerative braking means that the brake pads are designed to last the life of the car. Uh, there is a fixed servicing schedule with a basic inspection after two years, that's unlimited mileage, and subsequent services every year or 20,000 miles. 
Volkswagen says that its aim is to make sure that the battery pack lasts as long as the car too and sure enough the battery pack is warranted to have at least 70% of its usable capacity after 8 years or 100,000 miles. Uh, rather refreshingly by the way the battery size figures that Volkswagen quotes uh, for this car are net usable ones. A more honest trend started by Tesla. Some other brands quote gross battery sizes and then put the net usable size in the small print. There's the usual unremarkable uh, three-year, 60,000-mile Volkswagen warranty. Uh, the third year is operated by the retailer. And there's 12 years of body protection, uh, a three-year paint warranty, and three years of Volkswagen assistance, uh, which includes European breakdown cover. Uh, combustion Volkswagens, they only get a year. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, green bearded friends might like to learn of the fact that this is a carbon neutral product. It's manufactured at Volkswagen's plant in Zwickau, uh, the most efficient plant in Europe, which uses 100% green electricity. Where the plant's emissions are unavoidable in things like transport and logistics, uh, Volkswagen compensates by contributing to internationally recognised climate protection initiatives like uh, forest protection projects in Borneo. Uh, so an Asian farmer's land might be forested as a result of your ID5's creation. That all sounds great until you consider the fact that uh, with technology at present, uh, automotive EV batteries are going to end up in landfills at the end of their working lives, which is about as far from being green friendly as it's possible to get. Uh, Volkswagen, like uh, other brands, is working hard to try to change that. Uh, they're building a pilot plant in Salzgitter, which either gives batteries a second life or uses them as a source of raw materials after recycling. It's all part of the huge investment that the Volkswagen Group conglomerate has made here, but one eye is very much on the bottom line. EU law now requires automakers to meet an across-the-range average emissions level of 95 grams per kilometre, with a fine of 95 euros for each gram over the limit, a figure then multiplied by every car sold. As a result of that, it was reported recently that to minimise punitive financial penalties as a result of that policy, Volkswagen needs to sell one electric ID4 or ID5 for every two conventionally engined Tiguans. So the stakes here, in other words, could hardly be higher. You have to wonder exactly how many people will be in the market for a car like this right here, right now. And how many of those people that are will decide that they want this car rather than its identically engineered and similar looking VW Group cousins, the Skoda Enyaq IV Coupe and the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron. But the Volkswagen brand remains committed to broadening its EV lineup no matter what, and the ID5 certainly provides a sleek looking halo model for ID3 and ID4 hatch owners to aspire to. It's good to look at, it's practical, it's full of tech, and it offers very competitive driving range figures. The problem is, though, that most of its rivals could be described in a similar way, and a number of those cars are better to drive than this one. That might not matter so much if the cabin trimming felt a bit more upmarket, and if Volkswagen wasn't asking such a premium to go from ID4 to ID5 ownership. As it is, this car faces an uphill struggle in carving out market share for itself in this segment. At least variant choice is easy. The base Pro motor is slightly underpowered, while the top dual motor GTX version is slightly overpriced. That leaves the mid-level Pro performance derivative we've been trying here as the sweet spot in a range which will appeal broadly on aesthetics. If you like the idea of one of these on your driveway and you don't mind the aspirational asking prices, then you'll probably like almost everything else about it. But you will be a rare kind of customer. Maybe that's part of its appeal.